Introduction to triangles of neck and posterior triangle. So let's begin with the side of the neck. The side of the neck is quadrangular in shape. It's divided by the sternocleidomastoid into the anterior triangle and the posterior triangle. Before moving on, let's learn a little about the sternocleidomastoid. The sternocleidomastoid originates from two regions. The sternal head begins from the mandibulum sterni and the clavicular head originates from the uh, medial third of clavicle and the insertion is into the lateral surface of the mastoid process. Uh, further subdivisions of the posterior triangle are created by the inferior belly of the homohyoid. So the posterior triangle is divided into the occipital triangle and the subclavian triangle. Likewise, the anterior triangle is divided by two muscles. These are the digastric muscle, superior belly of the homohyoid. The digastric muscle originates from the digastric fossa of the mandible, passes through the hyoid bone and gets inserted at the mastoid process. So the triangles present here are the submental triangle because it's present in the submental region, the digastric triangle, the carotid triangle. The carotid triangle is named so because of its important content which is the carotid artery and the muscular triangle. Let's jump into the posterior triangle. Boundaries of the posterior triangle. The posterior triangle is anteriorly bounded by the posterior surface of the sternocleidomastoid posteriorly by the anterior border of the trapezius, inferiorly by the middle third of the clavicle and a superior aspect or the apex is formed by the meeting point of sternocleidomastoid and trapezius. Roof. The roof is formed by the deep cervical fascia. There are certain structures that pierce the roof. They are the four cutaneous branches of the cervical plexus and the external jugular vein. The four cutaneous branches of the cervical plexus passing through the roof are transverse, transverse cervical nerve, greater auricular nerve, lesser occipital nerve and the supraclavicular nerves. Now let's move on to the floor. The floor is formed by four muscles, namely the semispinalis capitis, splenius capitis, levator scapulae, and scalenius medius. Subdivisions of the posterior triangle are formed by the inferior belly of the homohyoid. So we know the posterior triangle is divided into the occipital triangle and the subclavian triangle. Let's move on to the contents of each of the triangle. Contents of occipital triangle are four cutaneous branches of the cervical plexus. The same four cutaneous branches of cervical plexus which we saw uh, piercing through the roof. They are the transverse cervical nerve, greater auricular nerve, lesser occipital nerve and supraclavicular nerve. Spinal accessory nerve, dorsal scapular nerve. So, the nerves present in the occipital triangle are a transverse cervical nerve, greater auricular nerve, lesser occipital nerve, spinal accessory nerve, supraclavicular nerve and the dorsal scapular nerve. Let's move on to arteries. There are two arteries running through the occipital triangle. They are the superficial branch of the transverse cervical artery and the occipital artery. So, the nerves are transverse cervical nerve greater auricular nerve, lesser occipital nerve, spinal axillary nerve, supraclavicular nerve and dorsal scapular nerve and the arteries are the superficial branch of transverse cervical artery and the occipital artery. Let's move on to contents of the subclavian triangle. 
Let's talk nerves first. The trunks of the cervical plexus are the nervous structure present in the subclavian triangle, followed by arteries. The third part of subclavian artery and three small arteries which are the suprascapular, dorsal cervical and transverse cervical artery and veins, the subclavian veins and the external jugular vein arising from the subclavian vein.